So if you're in Texas, you would say that uh, beef brisket is probably the best thing to smoke. If you're in California, you're probably thinking tri-tip, Kansas City maybe burn ends, ribs, but I'm telling you, anybody who loves barbecue loves nothing more than a good butt. You can rub it, you can slap it. I'm talking about this kind of butt. So tonight we're gonna prep a, uh, a pork butt. We're gonna prep two of them actually uh, for our smoke tomorrow and uh, can't wait. Love to slap some butts. So in order to prep this butt, I like to uh, trim a lot of the fat off of it. Now my buddy Tom is going to roll over right now. Well, he's not dead, so he's not going to roll over in his grave, but he's going to freak out right now because he is kind of the opposite, right? And there's no right or wrong way. This is just my way, but I like to trim some of the fat off of it. Um, to get started, you're going to need a few things. Number one, um, I like to have a, a rag. Um, if you uh, ever stayed in a hotel, you might recognize these. I like to have what I call my barbecue rag. Um, you, I like to use uh, my rubber gloves, latex gloves. Um, and you need some, uh, I, I usually use a couple knives. Um, this is my favorite knife. This is uh, uh, a Gunther Wilhelm, or Gunther Wilhelm here in the south, but Gunther Wilhelm. I bought this at the uh, World Championship Steak Cook-Offs. It's my favorite knife. This sucker is so, so good, so sharp, so balanced. Uh, I recommend making sure you have a good knife if you're into barbecuing or smoking or cooking steaks or anything. A good knife is one of the uh, better things that you need. In fact, Gunther Wilhelm himself told me to buy two, one, this one and then a different one. Uh, I just bought this one and I regret not buying the other one. So you need a good knife um, in order to cut. So. We're gonna get ready here. Uh, we're gonna slap on the uh, latex gloves and we'll get started. All right, so we're really gonna focus on, on the meat itself here. And there's a couple things that you need to know. Number one, this is bone in, right? So there's a bone in the middle of it. Um, and then you've got this big fat cap up here. Like I said, my friend Tom likes to leave this on. Fat is flavor, so the flavor goes in. I like to take a lot of this fat off because I want the flavor of my rubs and the smoke to penetrate it. The one thing that I want to point out to you is this right here. This is what's called the money muscle. In barbecue competitions, you're going to cut this to expose this muscle in order for, the, it's kind of like a tenderloin almost, right? So you're gonna expose it. For backyard cooking, look, I'm not gonna do that. This one actually is not a great money muscle. Um, but, uh, you know, for what we do, uh, you know, I bought this at my local grocery store. I usually get them at Sam's or Costco. I don't buy the, uh, you know, $70 um, uh, compact Duroc. Uh, Compart Duroc, I would love to and I have before, but for backyard smoking, this is all that I need. So uh, what we're going to do is trim a lot of this fat off of here. Again, you can see, let's start on the top. There's, a, there's just a lot of extra pieces of fat here that, again, you're not going to get the flavor of the smoke or the flavor of your rub inside of the meat. So I like to take this part off. And again, I like to flip it over and get a lot of the fat off the bottom as well. So I could, I, I'm not going to sit here and trim all of this in front of you. And yes, Bobby Flay I've, or, or Amberell, I've got my finger on top of the knife, which I know you're not supposed to do. But you want to trim, I like to say if it's white, you know, take it off. I like to expose the meat. You can kind of see here, I'm starting to expose the meat. Now I'm not going to dig in and get all that. Uh, if I were in competition, I might flip it over, you know, you're gonna wanna trim some of this down here, right? I am gonna expose a little bit of the money muscle just because I can, right? But you wanna trim all this white stuff off so you're exposing a lot of the meat. All right, so we just finished trimming our uh, pork butt. Again, it kinda like
likes to be rubbed and slapped a little bit, but you'll notice what the fat cap, again, I've got a lot of fat in here, fat's flavor, but I've trimmed off so I can get the smoke and the rub. You can see that I kind of open it up a little bit, get some of that fat out of there, but I left a lot in there because fat really keeps it moist and then I've exposed the money muscle just a little bit even though we're not worried about it um, this time, but now we're gonna apply some rub to it. So I like using these half pans. Th these things uh, are a savior for me. I use them all the time. I use them, I got one down here in my sink for a junk, uh, junk tray. Um, what I like to do with, with the rub is I like to take one glove off so I don't get garbage all over the, uh, uh, all over the uh, container here. I'm using two rubs today. I like to layer my flavors, so I'm using the uh, Meat Church Honey Hog Hot, and I'm using uh, just a little bit of Malcolm Reed's uh, Killer Hogs uh, Barbecue Rub. So I'm starting with the Honey Hog Hot. Um, and I'm really gonna put a nice coating on this. Um, again, maybe uh, 10 to 12 inches above the meat so it spreads out a little bit. Make sure you get all sides of the meat, right? Make sure you get down in the areas that you might have opened up or butterflied or whatever else. Um, and really give it a nice coat of this Honey Hog Hot. I like to use the Honey Hog Hot because as you're gonna see in my in a, a later video, I add a little bit of sweetness um, when I wrap my pork butt, so this gives it a nice contrast and flavor. Look, pork, especially pork butt like this, it can stand a lot of, it needs a lot of flavor, right? If, if, if it's just, uh, you know, no rub or just a smoke, it tastes good, but this adds just a ton of flavor. I love this Meat Church Honey Hog Hot. I am not a uh, paid spokesman for Honey Hog Hot by any means or by Meat Church. I just love the product. I actually have a whole cavalcade of dry rubs over there that I use for different things. I like to just try stuff out. So I recommend, hey, just go find some rubs, go online, order some, see what they say, you know, or see what they taste like. A lot of people will cover um, their pork with uh, mustard or with oil or something like that to help the... Uh, the dry rub stick, but you know, I've never had a problem just applying it directly to the meat. That seems to stick just fine to me. Uh, you'll see it uh, after it sits in the refrigerator overnight. It actually has a beautiful color to it. Now, right on top of that honey hog, I'm going with my uh, Killer Hogs barbecue rub. It just adds a different layer of flavor, a little bit different color. It's a little bit deeper red than the uh, honey hog hot. So that just adds a nice, uh, nice contrast and adds a little bit different color bark. So this probably has some more paprika in it um, than the uh, Honey Hog Hot. Again, I'm hitting all the sides. I'm making sure I don't miss anything. You want flavor, flavor, flavor. You can't, well you can't put too much on there, but you really aren't going to risk it if you're just doing what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to open her up here and make sure I've got a lot of flavor there. Now, I like to leave the side that I trimmed off the fat cap from, I like to leave it facing down. Again, I don't know why. It just seems to work for me. I'm going to give this top one last dose of uh, the Killer Rub, Killer Hogs Barbecue Rub. And that's all she wrote. I'm going to cover this with foil. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator overnight. We're going to smoke some butt in the morning. All right, so we are ready. You can see the, uh, the pork butts have been in the refrigerator overnight. It's about 7 a.m. It's going to take about 10 hours to cook these. I got one a little bit bigger than the other, but that's okay. Final steps before we put them on the rec tech. Uh, I like to... Just give them a little spritz with uh, some uh, apple juice. Just to kind of moisten them up a little bit. Again, I'm gonna spritz throughout. But I'm just gonna give them a little spritz just to moisten them up a little bit. And then I'm actually even going to add just a little bit more on just on one side, just on the side that's exposed. A little bit more dry rub, just to give it a little bit more flavor and then 
I'm going to go ahead and put my temperature probe for the Rectech in now, and I can feed it through the uh, little hole in the Rectech once I, but you want to make sure when you put the temperature probe in, you want to make sure that you don't hit any bone. So I, I, I don't feel any bone there. If, if your temperature probe is against the bone, you're going to get a little bit of a, of a bad reading. Um, so you want to have the probe ready to go. We're going to go put these on the Rectech and uh, start smoking. It's that easy. Now, you can see Rectech is cranking right at 225. You can see the internal temperatures of each of the butts. One's at 44, one's at 46. That's about right. I got my leads going up into the Rectech. Let's just take a look at these bad boys as they get started. This is the, I love looking at the, oh yeah. Look how nice those butts look. Just wanna, just wanna, I rubbed them a little bit more. I gave them a little slap. Now we're gonna let them do their things. So the rec tech's cranking away. We're gonna check it out. See how it's going. We're gonna spritz a little. Oh my God, look at that, baby. Yeah. Spritz a little bit with our apple juice. Those are looking phenomenal. Love it. Let's check these bad boys out. Oh, it's almost time to wrap. Got a little smoke facial here. Spray these suckers down one more time. They're looking fantastic. They're running about 160 right now. I want to get them about 165 and then I'm going to wrap them. We'll walk through that process here in just a little bit. You know, I don't know about you guys, but there's very little in this world that excites me like a good butt. So it's time to wrap those butts. So first I want you to take uh, two good sized pieces of aluminum foil. Put one this way, about the same size, and put it across this way. Move it out. We're going to place our butt right there. Be right back and go grab it. All right, so the internal temp of this is about 164, 165. It's exactly where I want it. You see it's got a beautiful dark bark on here. We're going to wrap it up for the rest of the cook to keep it moist. Let me show you a couple tricks that I use. First of all, the spray bottle. I like to go ahead and spray it again with the uh, apple juice in here. Just keep it nice and moist. Next, I like to use my... Bolton butter, which is the squeeze parquet with a little bit of apple juice in it. So it comes out a little bit easier. I'm almost done with this one. So it's <clears throat> still flowing out pretty nice. Next, I like to use a little bit of tiger sauce. My friend Tom took a, a barbecue smoking class from Johnny Trigg and he recommends using this. I've also used Tennessee Sunshine. I've also used sriracha, which actually didn't turn out bad, but I prefer the tiger sauce the most. It's got a little bit of a wang to it, a little bit of a kick, so I like to just put about a half a bottle on there. I like to put a little bit more rub. Again, I like to layer the flavors here. So I'm just putting a little smattering of rub, and then I told you I've got a little bit of a sweet component to it. I like to add a little bit of brown sugar to mine. So you've got that sweet and you've got that heat from the tiger and the honey hog hot. I'd choose about that much sugar. I don't know, it's probably a half a cup, three quarters of a cup, something like that. Doesn't really matter. Some people put honey, some people put, you know, a turbinado. I like to use the brown sugar. And then we're going to wrap this. Okay, we're going to make sure that it's wrapped nice and tight. Make sure we don't get any of the juices flowing out all over the place. And this is going to kind of self-base itself on the smoker now. We're going to put it right back on the same smoker. Put the temperature probe back in just like we had it. So we can measure it. I'm going for an internal temp of about 204. All right, so now comes the really hard part, right? Got our pork foot up to an internal temperature of 204. That's where I like to pull it off. 204 gets it to where it's really gonna just shred apart beautifully. But here's the hard part. I gotta let it sit here. 
hour and a half is what I like to do, hour and a half, two hours. Um, what happens is when a, when, a, when a meat like this cooks, it, it really, you know, gets like this. And you got to have time to let it rest, right? You got to have time to let it rest. All those juices collect back in. And it's just a beautiful thing once we pull this. So we're going to set this here. We're just going to leave it on the counter. Some people put it in a cooler, but I'm just going to leave it right here for about an hour and a half. And uh, then we'll come back and we will pull this sucker. And you're going to see how good this is. Now, boys and girls, the moment of truth. It is time to pull our pork. Uh, I, I love doing this. You know, a lot of people use these these claws, right? You can you can you know shred and stuff. I, I like to just put these to the side, and I like to use the digits, thunder and lightning. So what I'm going to do? I've got a large tray this time. I got a smaller tray down here in my sink. It's going to kind of get all the, I'm going to put my bone in it. I'm going to put all the fat that I find in it because I'm just, I don't like to eat fat. Now, let me just tell you something. Let me just tell you something. Look at that. Oh, my God. Now, here's another one of my tricks. I like to save some of this juice. I don't know if you get, can you see that juice down there? Oh, yeah, you can see that juice, baby. I like to save the juice. So I make a little funnel here on the end. I pour some of that juice out. Oh yeah, we're gonna save all that. That is gonna be good stuff, all right? So let me just show you that. See, that's all. That's all goodness, right? That's all fantastic goodness. We don't want to get rid of that. Now we want to take our butt and get it out of the foil. Foil is going to go in the trash can. Oh, don't lose that piece. That's a good one. All right. Now, let's take this thing apart. Look how easy that bone comes out. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's the bone that was in the middle. Let's take it out. Throw it in the scrap pile. That is just good old pulled pork smoked. You can see the moisture content in that thing. As I'm breaking it apart, it just shreds. That's why when you cook it like this, you don't need those claws because it's not going to be tough. Now, we still may have some fat up here. I can feel it. It's jiggling right there. I'm just going to pull all that fat off, right? There's a little bit of pork in there. I'm going to peel that back and throw that in there, but that's a big hunk of fat. That's not nice, so we're going to throw that away little more fat right there now you can just blend the fat in it'll melt basically into the meat but I like to pull it out I don't want somebody to get a big mouthful of fat when they're eating my barbecue I want it to be just absolutely delicious so we're gonna clear some of that fat out of there and again you don't have to get it all but see this meat right here these are called the tubes and these are some of the most tender part of the pork right there so we're gonna shred that sucker up right there oh my gosh here's that this would be what's considered that money muscle right here. If I were to be in competition, I would have taken this off a long time ago and wrapped it and made it real tender cut. But let me just tell you something. This thing is just absolutely shredding apart. Look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't this so... I'm telling you, there's. it just feels so good. If it eats half as good as it feels... It is going to be one heck of a pulled pork platter, pulled pork sandwich, whatever you want to do. That's, folks, look at that bark. Look at that pulled pork. That is phenomenal. So here's my final tip. Let me, let me look at that. Look at that pulled pork. My gosh, it's so good. But let me just... Here's a little trick I like to use. Remember that juice that I poured off of it? Well, this is really moist, but you know what? That juice is full of flavor, too. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that juice, making sure I don't get any of the fat going in there, and I'm just going to drizzle it over top of here, just like that. That's my little trick. 
keeps it nice and moist and flavorful. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Let's take a let's take a bite here. The money shot. Here's the bite. Mmm. You first get that little hint of sweetness from the brown sugar and the butter, but then a little backdoor heat, which is what I like. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that, that beautiful, beautiful piece of pork right there. One of the tubes. Gosh, I can't wait to eat that. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this. This is one of the better ways that I know how to cook pulled pork. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Bon appetit. See you next time. Mmm. Mmm. Love a good butt.